overheating. Even in the middle of the day, when most big predators are just trying to keep cool. And there are other things about your body designed specifically for running. And this is one of them. Yes, it's a foot. And it is brilliantly designed to provide spring. The ligaments and tendons support the sprung arches of the foot. So that every time our foot hits the ground, the spring stalls and then releases energy, making running more efficient. And there's a really important muscle in our bums. Our gluteus maximus muscle is huge and we hardly use it at all when we're walking, but it comes into its own when we run. So all of these adaptations suggest that running, especially over long distances, was really important to our early ancestors. But there was something else that may have really given our ancient ancestors the edge. Language, the ability to communicate and plan. <laughs> Red, yellow, green. How, how do you say it? <laughs> we don't know when people started to speak, but there's evidence that languages like this, click languages, may be the oldest in the world. <laughs> So it's possible the first families sounded a bit like this. It is an amazing language. Every sentence is peppered with these clicks and tutting noises that are consonants. They're just very unlike any consonants that I'm used to pronouncing, so I'm struggling with it. So this is... <laughs> and it's a type of language that could have been crucial to our ancestors' survival. It may be that these click languages have been around for so long because they're particularly useful during hunting. Apparently, when the Bushmen are stalking an animal, they drop their voices to a whisper, so they're talking almost entirely in clicks, which makes a lot of sense to me. The clicks are high-pitched noises. They don't travel far through the bush, so the hunters aren't going to scare off their quarry. Equipped with language and hunting skills, we flourished and began to do something else, spread out. We don't know for sure which routes they took, but new evidence shows that very early on, modern humans were living at the extreme southern edge of the continent. I'm heading along the South African coast to a place called Pinnacle Point. Today, it's a playground for the rich. But during the construction of this golf course, archaeologists discovered something amazing deep beneath the fairway. This could be the oldest known dwelling of our species anywhere in the world. So this is where you've been digging? This is the oldest part of the cave. Um, what are the dates here then as we go down through these layers? Uh, these layers date from 130 to 167,000 years ago. It's just so incredibly ancient. It's amazing. Did you know how important what you were excavating really was? Not until we got those dates. Um, but yeah, uh, amazing, stunning.
The evidence in this cave reveals that those ancient families were behaving in ways quite unlike previous species of human. Well, Kyle, that's not from this cave, is it? Because I recognize this. This is a hand axe, isn't it? That's correct. Now, that's more typical of what you would find from about a million and a half years ago to about 300,000 years ago. So what sort of thing were you finding in the cave then? Um, okay, well, tools like these, blades and points, are much more typical of what we find in this cave. Made on quartzite, locally available on the beach down here. And in our oldest levels here, alongside these types of tools, we also have these very small bladelet tools. These are tiny. What could such minute blades have been used for? Obviously, these weren't used.